Rise and shine? Well, I've risen, but don't expect me to shine. Nonsense. Today's the day. I'm feeling lucky. Roger. Yes, my love? Do you think one day we might just go crazy and splash out on a coffee that actually tastes like something? But we've a lifetime supply of this. I know, that's what worries me. When I hit the big one, you can have all the coffee you like. <laughs> Thanks. David and Lucy have invited us over for dinner tonight. Just a quiet thing, a couple of other people there, nothing too stressful. We can get a taxi there, get a taxi back. You, you'll hardly have to walk any distance. David and Lucy are lovely, but... Sure. I understand. It's just too draining for me. OK. Uh, well, I, I better go and check today's entries. I'm sorry. To worry about. Oh, do you know, I couldn't sleep. I've been awake all night worrying about Ruth. You know, I don't think we're ever going to find her father. Well, we can't give up now. Well, I've run out of options. I don't know how I'm going to tell her. I promised her, you know. Don't say anything to Ruth. Just um, give me a couple of hours. What are you going to do? Just till lunchtime. Okay. Good luck. Good morning. Good morning. Karen, is a banana in my box. I'm just trying to spread the healthy eating word. I mean, see, doctors can't set a good example how the patient's ever going to learn. OK, thanks. <laughs> Karen. Yeah? Swap you, though. Pair for a banana? Get lost. Michelle, you got anything you want to swap for my banana? <laughs> Michelle. Sorry? What's up? She's uh, driven Archie away. What? Yeah, um, Archie's left. No. Well, it was what was right for him. He's gone to work on another VSO project. Huh. Oh, when he didn't have time to say goodbye, what'd you do to him? It's not my fault he left Jimmy. A perfectly good manager, OK? Yeah, I, I, I didn't say you wouldn't. I can look after my staff. Hi, I'd like to meet up with you later, if that's OK. Of course. Just want to check how you think you're getting on. Oh, about half two? OK. Stop! Stop! What are you doing? Shredding the losers like you usually do. No, no more, please. Why? We haven't won anything, have we? No. Oh, well, I don't want this lot clogging up my house any further. She's got, oh, she's got a really bad headache coming on. That, just that thing it just goes right through me. OK, I'll finish it later then. OK, great, thanks. What were you doing upstairs? What? I could hear you moving things around. I was starting to wonder if you'd got a woman up there. No. No, I was just, I was just tidying up, that's all. Look, come on, why, why don't you go back through to the other room? I'm making a nice cup of tea. I'm not a complete invalid, you know. I can manage the complexities of a kettle if I need to. Do you know if anybody's complained about me? Why? What have you done? I don't know, it's just... <laughs> Michelle's asked to see me. And after seeing the way that she treated Archie, I've been trying to avoid her. I don't want to go the same way. Well, what are you doing? I did a very good job of giving the doctors a nice, healthy snack this morning. I didn't do such a good job of giving them the right notes. Oh. But I should get it sorted in no time. So what do you think I should do about Michelle? What are they doing there? Well, do you think that she's going to fire me? What? Um, no. No, I'm, just, I'm sure you'll be fine. And remember, if you keep a healthy body, you'll have a healthy mind and then you'll be able to cope with anything. Hey. Have a grape. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Hi, come in. How are you? 
Hi, Sally. Hi, Dr. Granger. Come in. Finally, someone who speaks. Sorry, is Roger still in a funny mood? Well, you wouldn't exactly call him talkative. Have you been? I suppose I'm pretty much the same, really. Well, the, the headaches have been getting worse. You taking anything for them? Yeah, paracetamol, but it doesn't make any difference. You've moved your bed down. Yeah. I can manage the stairs, but it just wipes me out for the next day. So your mobility's got worse? I guess so. And you're not getting a chance to get out much? No, which is driving Roger mad. I just can't face being around people, though. Having Emmy's quite tiring enough without everyone constantly droning on about what they think I should be doing to get better. Okay. Tell me more about the headaches. Why were you running a bath? You should have been revising. Sorry about this. We'll just get a whole load of towels and mop it up before it goes through the floorboards. Now. Oh, kids. Right. Repeat prescription. I'm on that. Um, uh, what? If you just take a seat, I'll be with you in a second. I'm calm, healthy, and I'm in control. Shut the door, shut the door. What are you up to? Finally won something. Something worth having. What did you win? The Leatherbridge Lottery. Hundred grand. Don't seem very happy about that. Sally went on one of her shredding binges this morning. That's bad luck. Hiding from the patients? Yes. <laughs> At least you're honest. I think they hate me every last one of them. Oh, now we've all had days like that. Kids have destroyed the house. I mean, literally destroyed it. Why don't you have one of your healthy snacks? It might revitalise you. Yeah, maybe. Oh, it's um, Ruth's dad's number. Really? Yeah, having a hobby who's a copper has its perks. I got him to pull some strings. Is he allowed to do that? Oh, of course not. Sorry. My lips are sealed. Promise. Look, it's, it's nearly lunchtime. Why don't you go early? I'll cover for you. Oh, I can't do that. Well, you look as if you could do with a break. Can I owe you for this? Well, maybe I could have a walk in the fresh air and then a nice healthy salad somewhere. Yeah. Sounds just what you need. She doesn't even know you won, does she? You stay out of this. It's none of your business, not a word, all right? I mean, I wanted to tell her myself. Make it a nice surprise. It's good of you. Is that Stuart Pierce? Yep. Oh, hi. Um, it's Julia Parsons here. I'm calling from the Mill Health Centre, Leatherbridge. It's about Ruth. Ruth? Yes, your, your daughter. Oh. Is she all right? Uh, no, she's in hospital. An accident? It's a psychiatric hospital. Oh. She's very ill. This is not a good time for me. She doesn't have anybody else. She needs her family. She's done all right without me. Please, won't you just go and see her? Hello? 
Mr. Pierce, look, I wouldn't be asking you if it wasn't serious. All right. All right. I'll go. Thank you. Was there anything else? No, thanks. You best be off then. Roger. Well, you can't do anything to make you better. I think I'll be the judge of that. If you need anything, you know where I am. OK? Yeah, thanks. What's going on? Nothing. I always know when you're lying. He was doing something upstairs earlier. <laughs> he wouldn't tell me what it was. But you're imagining things. Don't mind if I have a look, then. Don't be ridiculous. Look, you, you really shouldn't, Sally. You know those stairs are too much for you. Yes, and you know that too, don't you? She relies on you. Thanks for the advice, Doctor. You're planning on going somewhere? Jimmy. Now I want you to come straight in your breathing for me, OK? So breathe in. Out. Breathe in. It's, it's my heart. No, look, Karen, you're having a panic attack. Okay? So I need you to breathe. It really hurts you. OK. Um, is it kind of burning? Mm. Yeah, well, it looks like you've just eaten half a cow, so I'd say that heartburn was part of the course. Oh, heartburn? Yep. Oh, oh I don't... I'm like a bloody prat. Were you going to tell me, or were you just planning on leaving? Where were you going to go? I don't know. You can't afford to leave. You haven't got the money. Oh, so you have got the money. I finally did it. I got lucky. I won the local lottery. I thought it might make things better between us. I still can't walk properly. I still have to sleep for half the day. I still can't do anything. No amount of money is going to make the slightest bit of difference to any of that. I know, and I realise that. Yeah. So you decided to run away? What else can I do? I mean, I can't make you better. I just... I just can't cope with this anymore! Anyway... It's, it's, it's all irrelevant. You, you, you've, you've shredded the ticket. So is it just the lack of winnings that's keeping you here? Is it? That's what I really need to know. I don't know. Have a nice life. I thought I was going to die. I really did. But you're not. You're fine. You wouldn't think it, would you? If you read all those leaflets they got at that surgery, they make out that if you're over 40 and you eat anything vaguely unhealthy, you can end up in an early grave. Depends on healthy eating. Yeah. No. My mum. What? She died of a heart attack when she was my age. So that's why you've been so worried recently. I, it, but it makes you think that sort of thing. It, it, yeah, of course it does. I'm worried that it might be genetic or something. Karen, you'll be fine. You reckon? Yeah. No, nothing's changed from what I said before. Sort your diet out, get regular exercise, keep a check on your blood pressure and your cholesterol, and you'll be doing the best you can. Well, I, I really did try to eat properly, but then I get, I get um, stressed uh, and it all goes out the window. Yeah, well, everyone has blips along the way. I can, um, I can help you if you want. 
plan your meals, make sure they're well balanced. All you'd have to do in return is... Stop driving everybody completely mad. Yep. <laughs> How unbearable was I on a scale of one to ten? <laughs> well, I really don't think we should do the scale thing. That bad. <laughs> I put a banana in your box. <laughs> you put a pear in Daniel's. <laughs> You're not going to believe what I put in Hester's. <laughs> I wanted to see if he'd tell me. He'd been behaving so strangely even by his standards. He left it on the table right next to the results in the paper, the silly man. I don't want him to leave. He just doesn't know how to cope. Typical Roger. Bottles everything up inside and then acts on impulse when it all gets too much for him. Look, if he really is leaving, then we need to think about practicalities. Mm. Yeah, well, I'll sort something out. You seem to be dealing with this very well. I'm not. Can you get me a drink of water, please? Of course. I thought you'd gone. You know, she's uh, putting a brave face on it, but she's going to need help around the house. And if you're not here, then I suggest you make sure someone else is. How can I go? Are you a gambling man? I have my moments. I love the buzz of it. Every time the thrill that I might actually win. What kept me going after I lost my job? Dreaming that today I, I might get lucky. And everything would go back. Back to how it used to be. People get ill, Roger. You know, it doesn't change who they are inside, who they used to be. You know, it took me two years to persuade Sally to go out with me. Yeah? There was always some other guy that was um, interested in her, you know? Somebody better looking or funnier, which is more confident than me. So I never said anything. And one day it all just kind of came out, you know? Turned out that she felt the same way about me all along. Sounds like you were lucky long before you got the winning ticket. Sally isn't the illness. Okay, it's, it's a problem, but it isn't her. I said I'd get her a glass of water. Thanks. Hello? Rose? Dad. Have a seat. <laughs> Ta. Some woman rang me, told me you were here. Julia. Is she a friend? My boss. Oh. What do you do? Receptionist. Oh, nice. Look at you. All pretty and grown up. Oh, I don't feel very pretty. <laughs> you used to say that when you were a kid. Till you got that blue dress. Then you won't stop wearing it. I'm surprised you remember that. Of course I do. <clears throat> well, thank you for coming. I've been doing a lot of thinking. 
Oh? About when I was young. Can you remember me ever being happy? Of course. Really? You were always smiling. I must have remembered it wrong then. I know things weren't always right at home. Your mum had her problems. Problems? Well, up here. After Vicky died, it never left her. Did she see someone about it? It's not the sort of thing you shout about, is it? So, how would you say you've got on since you first started? Good. Qu quite good. Or, or uh, adequate. And do you think you'd benefit from having clearer goals in the future? How, have I been missing my goals? Is that what you think? I don't know. Cherry? Yeah? What's wrong? I don't know anymore. Why are you acting so strange? Please, I... I really, really love this job and I will try twice as hard in the future. Just... Just give me another chance. What? I don't want to be shoved out of my ear like Archie. Uh, no. Cherry, you, you, you've got it all wrong. I reckon I should have spent more time at home when you were little. You were working, didn't really have a choice, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> it doesn't mean we can't start again. That's right. Maybe... Well, Maybe when I get out of here I could come and live with you for a bit. My place is a tip at the moment. I, I'm not really geared up for guests. I'm not really very good at the touchy-feely stuff, love. I'll go and fetch us a drink. Mr. Pierce? Yeah? Julia Parsons? We spoke on the phone earlier on. Hi. I've just, um, just come to see how Ruth's doing. I was just going to nip and fetch her a drink. Right, well, the kitchen's that way. I really thought that somebody had complained about me. No, look, I promise nobody has complained about you. Well, not yet, at least. Yet? It's bound to happen sooner or later. Because I'm a terrible nurse. No, no, not at all. Just part of the job. Don't be any reflection on you. Oh, that's something to look forward to. Look, you're good at this. Really. Things have just been a bit crazy around here recently. Maybe we all need to learn to relax, get to know each other a bit better. I know, why don't I organise a department night out at the ICOM? Really? Yeah, I'll even get the first round in. <laughs> so what, you were just going to leave? She doesn't even know me. Well, how is she going to feel when she realises that you've run away again? What am I supposed to do? I'm not cut out for this sort of thing. Oh, I see. So you just have to admit that you're rubbish at this and that gets you off the hook, right? Mr Pierce, she's your daughter. Now, don't you think that means that you should take some responsibility for her? She's going to need support, you know, when she comes out of here. Well, you haven't had to worry about her for years. Have worried about her. Look, she just needs a few weeks of your time right now. Is that such a lot to ask? There's no room at my place. <sighs> Maybe I can stay at those for a bit. Really? Yeah. Well, now, are you sure? Because if you say this... Look, I just said I'd do it, didn't I? Right, OK, well, that's, that's great. Yeah. Look, shall we go and tell her? It's your favourite. I thought you were leaving me. These are really good. Roger. Of course I'm not leaving you. Oh, really? Are you sure? 
You're not going to go travelling off around the world with your newfound fortune. I'll tear the ticket up if that's what you want. No, don't you dare. I just hate what our life's become. It's not exactly a barrel of laughs for me either. I know that. And I know it's not your fault. Do you? Come and stay at yours for a few weeks. Just till you're feeling a bit brighter. Thank you. <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> I better go and tell Smithy. Join you. Give the old community care a whirl. She's very interesting, very funny. I know, spring chicken. Sorry, I don't do blind dates. Jimmy! Look, all she needs from you is support and encouragement. I'll be fine. Why couldn't you just leave it? Why have you got to destroy everything you touch? I don't! Childhood memories haunt Dr Sloan next here on BBC One Scotland. Sins of the father in Diagnosis Murder.